right, welcome to the Bodybuilding Legends Show. I'm your host, John Hansen, and we are broadcasting from Tampa, Florida. Our guest on this edition of the Bodybuilding Legends Show is the legendary Roy Callender. For those of you that know your bodybuilding history, Roy was around for a long time. He started competing in the 1960s. He's a native of Barbados, and then he moved to England. He was competing in the NABBA Mr. Universe. He, in fact, he went into the very first NABBA Mr. Universe that Arnold Schwarzenegger won in 1967. And then Roy eventually won the uh, 1977 IFBB Mr. Universe and started competing in the professional ranks in the IFBB. He was in the Mr. Olympia from 1978, 79, 80, 81, and then he came back again in 84. So Roy's got some fascinating stories to talk about some of the, le the legends of the sport that he met in all of his years competing. It's going to be a great conversation with Mr. Roy Callender coming up next. Welcome to Opus Health. Tampa Bay's Elite Medical Center, where we offer dental, vision, primary care, urgent care, alternative medicine, IV therapy, and more to come. Along with wellness, weight loss, hormone replacement therapy, we are open seven days a week. You can reach us at 813-906-6737 or opushealth.org. We are located at 912 Channelside Drive in Tampa, Florida. You can book online or email us for, with any questions. All right, welcome back to the Bodybuilding Legends Show. And my special guest this week is Mr. Roy Callender, calling in from Canada. And Roy was one of the uh, most successful bodybuilders in the 1970s and 1980s. Uh, he won the Mr. Universe in 1977 and competed as a professional in the late 70s and early 80s and uh, he also competed against some of the greats of our sport like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Frank Zane and Mike Menser and Robbie Robinson so it's a pleasure to have you on the show Roy. Well Roy uh, let's let's start from the very beginning uh, I know you started competing in the 1960s but what got you into uh, into bodybuilding what got you interested in lifting weights and eventually competing? <laughs> it sounds like a seminar again. <laughs> um, I. I uh, I was I used to live in London. I had emigrated from Barbados to London to study law. Okay. And uh, I got into rugby. Very good game over there. Because I used to be I was working on the underground. Mm-hmm. Train driver, train guard, subsequent train driver, tube train driver, and uh, it's not a very active thing. You sit there and drive a train all day, and I had to find something to do. I was kind of. So I said I'll go and look for some friends, and they said, Roy, well, come and practice some rugby with us. So I got to rugby, liked it, got pretty competitive, actually, and then I was told, Roy, you're too skinny, man, you're too, <laughs> you're too light for the scrums, and uh, you know, go drink some beer and stuff like that. And I, I, went and I didn't try the beer thing, go lift some weights, I tried the weights, I went to the YMCA, mm -hmm. got hooked up in there and liked it. Actually, I started lifting weights in Barbados. Um, and I was still a kid. Okay. But lifting weight. Um, this this might seem retroactively now. It might, it might seem a bit weird to say this, but there was a, an old gentleman there. My sister was an athlete, and he said to my mother one day, "You know what? I think your daughter would benefit from coming to my gym in my yard. Mm -hmm. Everyone gym in their yard. There's no building and stuff. And uh, we have a set of of um, Hoffman weights here, and uh, we will do this and that and the other." And my, my sister started training a bit before me, not lifting big heavy weights, but he had her having these weights and doing walking lunges. Now, I'm talking 50s now. Wow. So today, we might seem like walking lunges, that's a big deal. <laughs> He's, he since died, but um, I've never forgotten it. Yeah. Um, to have a sprinter, an aspiring sprinter, want to train her at the age of about, I think we were 12, 12, about 13 years old. Okay. He wanted to wait, and my mother thought, I don't want her to look like a man. I don't want my daughter looking like a guy. Right. Imagine those days, and we were not really wealthy. Yeah. But um, she started training with weights, and then I was the brother. So if he wanted my daughter to come and train at the gym, my mother said, well, Roy has to come. So I went in and I played around too and got to like it. Okay. And I just, I just admired the guys and started training, doing only bicep curls, because that's all I was interested in at the time. That would impress them. Right. Little 40 girls and stuff. <laughs> so I started with that, and uh, my sister, subsequently, three years later, won an athletic scholarship. Four years later. Mm -hmm. 
18, I think. She won an athletic scholarship to Texas Southern University. And I had, before previously, emigrated to London. And that's how I, I started, you know, I've got to get active. So I decided, okay, I'm going to get active, but I'm going to go find a gym or a place from rugby or something. So when the gym offer came up, the guy said to me, oh, go drink some beer, get in the gym, get some muscles. Right. So I went to YMCA and knew a little bit of what I was doing. And followed the guys there and did a little bit more. And they said, Roy, you got a little bit, little bit of physique, man. Are you need some calves and stuff like that. I, I was interested. I just wanted to fill out my, my train driver coat and stuff. Yeah. And it, it got interesting. And uh, one day, some gentleman from East London came and said, you know, what's your name? I said, Roy. I said, uh, Roy what? I said, Roy Calvin. I said, oh. Well, I have a gym. Where do you live? I said, I live in Elford. He said, but I live in Stanford. It's much closer than London. Why not come to my gym? So I, I went to, his name was Bill Stevens. Okay. I went to his club and uh, I started training. He said, you can train here free. There's <laughs> 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 nothing to feed me more than that. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was a train guard at the time. So I started training free and along comes Rick Wayne one day. Mm -hmm. And he came to the gym and said, uh, Jimmy, um, Bill Stevens was talking about you. You look good. You got, you know, but you need some calves. You, you, you got, a, you got good potential. <laughs> I've never heard nobody had ever praised me or, or told me I had anything good in my life. Uh -huh. Um, growing up in Barbados, impossible. That doesn't, that doesn't happen. And I, took, I really took it hard, and then I took it seriously. Then I started drinking as much milk as I can, mm -hmm. eating as much as I can. Think <laughs> when I think about it now. I'm, I'm training as hard as long as I can. They came and said, you know, you, one day Rick said to me, listen, I'll write this program for you. I'll show you. I want you to do it as I set it out. And I remember it. He wanted me to train three days a week. And on every, every day, I had to do some form of calf work. Okay. Every day. Yeah. But I'm a kid, man. I'm 19, now 20. Mm -hmm. Who cares about calves? So I skipped the calves. <laughs> and I go and do, I, you know how it is. And I go and do everything as the thighs or the... And my calves lagged, and he, he really came in one day and said, you're not working on calves. I said, yes, I do. He said, no, you don't want to start by lying. I know, I know something worked. <laughs> and uh, that time, Rick Wayne was one of Joe Reader's uh, people. He was uh, the big guy in Europe. Mm -hmm. And he sat me down and said, listen, I gave you this program. You don't know what you have here, man. Uh, I want you to do these calves. It's your weak point. Your calves are pretty high. But if you work on it, he went into all these details that didn't really interest me. I'm a kid. I just want big arms. Yeah. Anyhow, I did it. And they said they had this little competition plan for me. And, and those days, you didn't diet or anything. And mm -hmm. I went and took me to this novice competition, novice Mr. South East London. Okay. And that's my first competition, and I won it. What year was and that, Roy? Uh, 1967. Okay. Wow. So did you have good genetics for bodybuilding when you started training? Because it seemed like a lot of people noticed you right away. So you must have built up muscle pretty fast, huh? Um, for that age and time, yeah, I guess. But um, I, I genetics, I don't know. I, the, the, this, my, I don't know genetics. I don't know how to use that term. They probably stopped at my knees, the genetics thing. <laughs> because <laughs> the, the, <laughs> I had to work like crazy to uh -huh. and stuff. The following years to really try to bring my calves up to okay. some. some uh, so that, that's, that's where it started. So when you and started, I from, when you st I went from the Mr. London to uh, Mr. L Mr. Novice, Mr. Southeast Britain, not, not Mr. London. I won it, and then up comes Oscar Heidenstam, a guy who used to run health and strength. He said, "You know, you qualified to represent this area in the London Mr. Universe." I said, "Don't be crazy." <laughs> I mean, so I really got excited. Went to this universe, my first one, uh -huh. and now in this universe, medium high class. I mean. Right. And uh, Albert Beckles beat me. Right, right. And then I, then when I went home and told my parents, Albert Beckles beat me. He said, Albert Beckles. <laughs> and you, when you had a, when you had an eight o'clock curfew, he was Mr. Barbados. And uh, I said, my parents told me about you, man. He said, yeah, really? I met him again. You were Albert Beckles. You were the one who won Mr. Barbados. I couldn't even come outdoors after 8 o'clock because the neighborhood that I lived in, there were no lights. You couldn't come outside after. <laughs> I, I couldn't come outside after 8 o'clock when you were Mr. Barbados and we got to 
friends. I got to like the community. I uh-huh. stayed. I was hooked. <laughs> so you knew Albert? You, you heard of Albert when uh, when you were in Barbados? Well, he was a very big, very big name. Yeah. Alfonso was his name. We changed it to Albert. Uh-huh. But he had won Barbados and everybody used to admire this guy. And uh, everybody, wow. But I never thought I'd get to meet the guy. Compete yeah. against him. Yeah. It was, a, it was an honor to be beaten by him, actually. <laughs> so, so what were your, what were your memories of competing in that first Mr. Universe? That was the Mr. Universe that Arnold won, right? In 1967? Oh, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Well, that, and that was the first time I really saw a big guy. Arnold? Yes, I've seen yeah. him in my up close. Yeah. And, uh, yes. And um, because he was a novelty, young guy, always messing around, he just sort of hit it off. Mm-hmm. And he stayed on in a little while and stayed at White Bennett's house. White yeah. Bennett was a guy, who was a, he was like Bill Stevens, like bodybuilding and give anything to it. And uh, I went and saw him train a couple of times. Mm-hmm. And the fourth year in 1968, um, Rick Wayne was writing for Joe Reed at the time. He said, oh, I think you should, have, you should have another competition over here. I want to start the IFBB. Mm-hmm. I want you to come. And I said, man, if I, if I go to the IFBB, I felt excited. So I went back to the gym and was talking about it. And the guy said, if you go to the IFBB, there, that's an American thing, man. Don't do it. Uh, you should stay with the NABA Association because they'll ban you. Mm. And uh, Rick Wayne sat me down because he gave me my programs and he was so kind to me. I said, I'll compete, man. I said, come, they all, they all want to discourage you because they're afraid of you. Whatever he said convinced me, and I competed at this 1968 Mr. United Kingdom. Won it. Mm-hmm. He hustled me off to Munich three weeks later to compete at Mr. Europe. So when I got to the Mr. Europe in Munich, it was a long train drive. I nearly got put off the train too because we didn't, we didn't have the visa. But the guy looked at me and I said, I really came a long way. I don't want to turn back now. So they didn't put me off the train. Okay. So I got Nick and uh, they, they met me. Guess who turned up to meet me? Arnold turned up with the organizer, uh, Oscar. Oscar State. Oscar State. No, no, it was another guy. Anyhow, he was he was there at the the, the train station in Munich. Uh huh. He took me to this crappy little hotel, and uh, we stayed there. Turned up the next morning to judge. Franco, myself, Albert Roy, Parrot from London. And I said, there's no chance to even in this because Frank was Arnold's friend. They were always together. They came in the same car. Yeah. And I won. Oh, really? So that is the question you will not have seen in, you will not have seen in Wikipedia. I saw them all the information. I've never really written anything or divulged anything. This is the most in-depth I've gone in so far yeah. with you. And uh, uh, I, 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 that's the first time I ever beat Franco. Wow. On this meeting at the Mysterio. So I won the overall... And I beat Albert too. I beat Albert Beckham. Oh, really? I beat him. <laughs> yeah. So that was the, it was a, that was the 1968 Mister Europe then. 1968, and they yeah. sent me over to New York. Oh, you want to trip to New York? You have to go in New York. <laughs> so this guy Barbados, who had only seen London and Bridgetown, I can I can wait. I yeah. can wait, and the, I felt very excited about it. Getting a plane, take getting on a plane, and going to New York of all places. And there I met. Chuck Sipes, I came over to represent London mm-hmm. and came over to represent the United Kingdom because the contest that Rick Wynn had organized was called Miss United Kingdom, which qualified me to represent the United Kingdom at Miss Europe competition. Okay. Won the Miss Europe and that qualified me to represent Europe at the Miss World at the time. Okay. 68 in, in New York. Chuck okay. Sipes won overall. I got a proud second. Came back I and mean, head head bigger than a bus. <laughs> and uh, well, kid, man, <laughs> it's all new to me. I'm a star. You no, know, he went back the next morning to my job. But by that time, I was a train driver. Now I got promoted. Okay. And by the time I was a, went back to my job, took my trophy. You know, but all those train drivers were they were didn't they didn't care. <laughs> they all were us guys who wanted to work their forty hours and stuff. Yeah. So. I, it grew on me, and uh, somehow I got into the London Transport. Um, they had a little journal, a little newspaper that circulated for the uh, for the London Transport. Just put this guy, one Mr. Universe. Uh-huh. I liked. I I was hooked. By that time, I was so addicted that you know, if they'd taken me off, I would have died. <laughs> so 
I just kept going, and the rest, the rest, the rest. I'm sure you might might have fought some of it before you. Yeah. The rest is history. So pretty you good. also competed in uh, Miami that year, right, Roy? In my in against Arnold and Frank Zane at the Mister Universe. Exactly. We left. We left. I was Joe came over to me. This is why I felt so special. I've never been treated like that before. Yeah. So as soon as we walked off stage, Joe Rita, God rest him, came over and said to me, Roy, we are sending you to Florida. I said, what? <laughs> Florida? <laughs> um, okay, he said, but I have to go back to work. He said, don't worry about the work. I'll give you, I'll call them, I'll do this, I'll do that. And he did. Huh. And the luck transport accepted. And uh, I, I stayed in Florida two weeks. By then, I heard Arnold had won the Mr. Universe again and was coming to Florida. Yeah. So when he came to, we had just need another account. I don't think so because they were trying to discourage me from the IFBB anyway. Right. So he did come, and uh, when he when he turned up, he didn't speak much English. Mm-hmm. He spoke a little German because I was in Germany for, for a little bit after that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, all the rooms were full or something like that, and they put on to stay with somebody he wasn't familiar with. And when he heard Roy was there, he said, "No, I want to stay with Roy." <laughs> I he found me. And uh, I was staying with a little Japanese bodybuilder called Nabu, Nubio Takemoto at the time. I'll never forget it. Okay. So when Aaron came and knocked on the door, and Aaron says, Aaron wants to share the room with Roy. This guy started packing his things before the word was out. <laughs> and he started bowing. He started bowing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I walked through the door. <laughs> I'll never forget it. <laughs> and uh, Aaron and I stayed together for about two weeks. Oh, really? Wow, that's cool. Yeah, we stayed in that. We stayed in the hotel for about two weeks. We went over ten days before the competition, uh-huh. and we had a photo shoot after. And uh, this is 1968, man. Eh? Yeah. Um, we had a photo shoot after. I remember going down to the beach and reminded me of Barbados a lot. But uh, we stayed there for about two weeks in that hotel. Wow. So if, if if it ever comes up, the first person I ever slept with in the states is me. <laughs> <laughs> We shared the room for about two weeks. Wow. Hell of a two weeks. What was, Arnold a like? what was Arnold like back then, Roy? Uh, you got to train with him and hang out with him and, and meet with him. And, you know, so what was he like? What was his personality like? The same as you see now, but less matured. Okay. Very, very, very funny. Very, oh, man. I, uh, it's a hell of, it was a hell of an experience. And uh, yeah. I, I was going to save this for my book. But I was a hell of an experience. Staying with him, uh-huh. learning. I think I, I think I put a little tweet out one day. I remember him talking about addressing some crowd about winning. And when we came back to the hotel room after winning, mm-hmm. after Zing had beaten him, yeah, we showered and we we went upstairs, got something. We came up, we were talking. It's 10, 10, 30, 11 now, and we're watching. And what the hell? I can't remember. But um. We turn off the lights. I'll see you tomorrow because we got a photo shoot, man. And, uh, turn off the lights. I'm lying there now, feeling good about myself, wondering what the people in London would say and stuff. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, Arnold's mumbling under his breath. Poxy fucking judges. <laughs> Poxy fucking judges. <laughs> I said, oh, come on, man. The competition is over. I like I said I thought you could have won, but, you know... Zayn was much better. Zayn was browner, more more refined, a better poser. Right. More re- he was mature. It was great. And I said, leave it alone, man. You get it the next time. I'm sure about that. You get it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. So he grumbled. And then, 10 minutes later, I heard him mumble on his breath. I'd never forget this as long as I live. I am going to be big in this fucking America, he said. I'm going to be big. I gonna be big in this America. I said, to Brian, whatever, man, whatever. Okay, whatever. Let's go to sleep, man. We gotta shoot tomorrow. Yeah. So we all know how that part turned out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> when I saw that he had the right. One day I remembered he was he had the right to sign someone's death warrant in California as governor. Yeah. And, he, and I said, can you imagine this guy? He's sharing the same room together. He said he's gonna be big. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't know he meant to have the power of life or death or somebody. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. So how that, ups, how yeah. upset was Arnold after he lost? I heard he was crying in the hotel room. Was that true? I didn't. I heard him going like, I didn't. He didn't cry. Okay. He, I have never seen him cry. Yeah. 
Not even once. Yeah. But it hurt grumbling. Yeah. Exactly as I said it to you, Poxy. Fucking. Because every thought fucking was a good word. Yeah. Poxy. Judges. <laughs> Fuck. Judges. And now again. <laughs> Chapter. <laughs> judges. <laughs> That's a true story. Man. Did he? Did he think the contest was? Did he think it was fixed? Oh no! No, he didn't. He didn't be think that at the time. I didn't, okay. It wasn't. I didn't believe anything at the time. I didn't see anything that would. Um. No, it was a much. It was It was a much more honest time then. Mm-hmm. It was not involved. Not as much money. Not as much fortune. Right. So I didn't. I didn't get much of that. Maybe it could have been, but yeah, I don't. Could have been when a black guy won to Europe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this, yeah. This is 90, a black guy won Mr. Europe in 1968. So I couldn't see that it was fixed or anything like that at all. Right, right. Okay. Okay, so, you, did, so then you went back to uh, you went back to London and uh, continued your training. And uh, the next year you uh, went back to the Naba Universe, right? And you got second place to Boyer Co. You, your records are right, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't really into it. I didn't, I didn't feel like it at the time. I didn't feel like it, man. And oh, really? No. Uh, after that competition, I went back to Barbados. Oh, really? Huh. I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And um, I took a job as chief of security at the uh, Barbados Hilton at the time. And nine months later, there was a competition called Mister West Indies. Okay. And this guy, Alvin Harris, from Trinidad, sent over and said, Roy, you want you to come? You're sending the ticket. Bring some boys with you. I said, sure. So I went around the gym where I was at, showed five or six guys, and got them some, got them, you know, I'm very, very excited, got some plane tickets, sponsorships. You had to train that, and I, Sergio Olivia was the guest poser. Okay. And I went to train that and won the Miss West Indies. Um, and at that time, it was very funny to hear you know, man, they used to have, I think you remember when they used to have body part, best yeah. arm, best For Sure. And I won every body part. Wow. And the most muscular. Yeah, I don't think I was the most muscular guy, though, but uh-huh. I was the biggest guy before. Um, and with my North American and British experience, I was way really superior to the other guys. Yeah, yeah. But there is there more muscular than me, maybe not in balance, but mm-hmm. that's. <laughs> I remember now every body part and the most muscular and the overall title. So I came back to Barbados. And the people were really, exci- really excited, and everybody started training out. People started training like crazy, and uh, but that that happens, you know, that happens to any country like that. Yeah. Where uh, if somebody succeeds in pitching marbles, everybody will start pitching marbles. Right, right. Hey, what did you think of uh, what you think of Sergio when you saw him? Because he guest posed in '68, also, right, at that universe. Yes, he guest posed in. But well, I met him in New York at the Mister World. Oh, okay. Yeah, he wanted to compete at Mr. World, and Joe talked him out of it. Come on, man. Come on now. Come on. <laughs> oh, they were having the Mr. Olympia that night. Yeah. And uh, they wanted, okay, I want to compete at this competition first, and I will won this. So I remember distinctly, Joe and Ben took him, to, took him aside and talked him out of it. Really? So he did, yeah. So Chuck Sykes won the overall. Yeah. If he competed, I would have probably gone second in my class, but Chuck Sykes would not have won the overall. Right. It was a, if you can call that fix, that's fine. But I think it was the way that it it wouldn't have been fair though. Sergio was much superior, man. He was yeah for that for that time and a few years after. Oof, much much more superior than the others. Yeah. Talk talk a little bit about his physique, uh, Roy, because a lot of people don't realize how great Sergio was back then in the in the late sixties and early seventies. Well, I don't think my words. Would convince many people. I think it's hard for some people to imagine. I remember Rick Wynn had a had a word for him. Rick Wynn used to call him the myth, mm-hmm. and uh, I couldn't understand why. But Rick, <laughs> never forget him either. One of my mentors, he this guy, he would say things, and he, he wouldn't register until about, <laughs> depending on your level of intelligence, mm-hmm. about ten years later. Oh, Rick was right. <laughs> Um, and that was one of the ways he was right. I can't, I can't really, I don't think my words can convince anyone how really, how really advanced this guy was. He yeah. was, okay, pre, pre, I can't pre start one of He was, he was ahead of his time by miles. Yeah, yeah. And terrible diet. You've never seen anyone drink a Coke before. <laughs> I have. 
Right. Pick a coke and have a piece of carrot cake. This guy was, uh, he had it. If you can talk about genetics now and being blessed, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll, let, I'll let him in. Right, right. Not a lot of, well, he trained hard when he was there, yeah. but he didn't really feel like we did. Yeah, exactly. I think maybe it came from his weightlifting days. I don't know. I, I, people say every sort People said all sorts of things. Maybe it came from his weightlifting days. Right. He used to be a Cuban. Right, right. Maybe. Now, did you stay in uh, Barbados, Roy, or did you go back to uh, London? Well, I stayed in Barbados from 69 until 72. Okay. And uh, that's about when my, my thirst for being, living in a big country again yeah. hit me. <laughs> on a plane and came to Canada. Mm. Got off in Montreal, so stayed in Montreal ever since. Okay, okay. On the Montreal region, because I'm right, right now I'm outside of Montreal, but I'm still fighting this way. Yeah. I, I've stayed here ever since. I've been invited by many people to live all over the country. Or oh, come to Toronto, we'll do this, we want you to do that. And you do, you, know, you want to stay in Montreal. But, uh, so going to 1970 then, Roy, you, uh, you went to the Mr. World, right? And you competed against Rick Wayne? Was yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, I after winning the Mister West Indies, I went off to the uh, to New York. Okay. And you, you got that one on me. I know you forgot that one. And uh, it was it was mainly because it was there. I was representing the West Indies, so yeah, I was there representing. So I, I went off, and I think Rick Rick won. Yeah. And he, I came second. I came second in that one. That was in uh, New York, right? The one with oh, yeah. Mister Olympia and, and Sergio yeah. and Arnold and stuff. Yeah. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. People, people, people forget that is the one that Arnold really paid his respect to Sergio on that day. Yeah. <laughs> he had no qualms about it. He, too, was also an admirer of Sergio. You know? uh -huh. to, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, he had no problem with that. He felt good going. But he said, next time, <laughs> I will not, never forget it. He said, it's, it's, it's Sergio is good. He said, Sergio is good. No? I said, yeah, he's good. He said, but next time. A little bit better. <laughs> I said, I know, I know. <laughs> How'd you feel uh, losing to Rick Wayne? Was did Rick deserve it that night? I didn't know a lot about it at the time. I felt honored to be to love to lose him. That's how I thought at the time. Yeah, yeah. He was he was one of my teachers, and mm -hmm. uh, I felt really honored to. I didn't look at. I didn't see anything. My thoughts. I thought yes. Yeah. Be better. Yeah. 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 Rick had a great physique. Man. Yes. Yeah. Was he writing for Weeder back then, or was he just competing, right? He was right. He was doing both. Yeah. I think he was writing for him a little bit. Okay. He was still staying in California. I, I imagine he was, because he did write an article subsequent to that, describing his experience. I can't remember his magazine, or he did write about it. Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was a great writer. I always, I always loved reading his books and his articles. That's true. So in 71, then, you went to uh, the Mr. Universe again, and that was a big one because that Bill Pearl won the uh, professional, and uh, you competed in the amateur, and you got second to uh, Albert. So again. You were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he, could, he, he couldn't wait to say, yeah, you know. This yeah. Is not Mr. <laughs> so you, and, walked, you and Albert had a big rivalry, yeah. huh? Yeah, when he was walking past the trophy, he said, this is not Mr. Europe, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we had some fun. Oh, yeah. man. Um, that was why I was supposed to compete in France at the World Championships. Okay. But then again, the IFBB NABA thing, and they said, Roy, if you compete in this competition, you cannot come to France. Oh, okay. So I spoke to Ben, he said, come, come anywhere. So I came, and they had the meeting, they had the conference, and they decided anybody who competed at the NABA Universe last weekend is banned. Hmm. Mattel, Franco, Sergio. Yeah. Yes. But that's weird they didn't ban Albert because Albert was able to compete, right? Yes, but he was not a previous member. Oh, the oh I see. Okay. Yeah, that's that's why. It. Okay. So if you were in the IFBB before and then you went to that NABA show, then you weren't able to compete in the uh, in the World Championships. Oh, no. You broke rank. Sorry. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going back to Barbados, too, after having... After having uh, done that and taking a bit of heat, mm -hmm. but uh, they they lived with it because I brought back a trophy anyway. 
Yeah. That's one. So at that time, if you did something stupid and you he made up for it by doing something that was notorious, yes, it equaled out. I was happy. What did you think of uh, Bill Pearl at that 1971 Mr. Universe? That was his last competition. I was always an admirer, so last or first, clean, um, not really muscular, mm -hmm. muscular enough, but not ripped, but clean and aesthetic and statuesque. Yeah. Um, uh, I was an admirer. That's all I can tell you. In the words that I just told you, I'll repeat them again. That's when, when you mention him, that's all I think about, you know? Mm -hmm. We pose. Nothing, nothing uh, aggressive. Everything, oh, a dream, man. Yeah, yeah. Did you think he deserved to beat Sergio that year in that contest? No. No? But, um, no, but by our standards, no. Mm -hmm. But at that time in London, I even heard a judge say to me he was too muscular. No, two years later I fell off my chair. But then I said, "What's he talking about? I mean, too muscular. He was too, he was too ripped." I suck. I didn't. I had to be polite because the guy who's the gentleman who was speaking to me was older. So I didn't let him know my true feelings. Mm -hmm. I just let it slide. Hmm. But what judge did actually say that to me? Hmm. He was too muscular. So by muscular, the judge meant that Sergio was was too ripped. To, yeah. Okay. Huh. Yeah. Oh yes, and I heard that. I repeated it to very few people, but I will never forget it. The judge, a judge, actually said that to me. Wow. Okay. Roy, what do you? Think? Well, I thought, I thought, I thought Sergio should have won. No, but he was too muscular. Roy, he was too ripped. It's not nice. Okay. Never heard that before. Never heard it since. <laughs> yeah. Really. Um, yeah, because I heard that Sergio lost because he was too smooth, and that's how Bill Bill beat him. Well, Bill, Bill, you're pretty smooth. Bill is also smooth. Yeah, yeah. His physique is not a rich physique. This is why I just told him. Right. Except and clean looking, and he just, just doesn't do anything aggressive. He's well shaped, well proportioned, and balanced. Yeah. But yeah. not not the not the complete physique that we know. Right. Or want to know. Big and still muscular. I've never seen Sergio really smooth. I said, you can't, we can't really yeah. you can get pictures. Look at him. I've never seen him really smooth. Even smooth, he still looked real. Yeah, yeah. He still looked cut. Yeah, okay. You have to look at it. You can have to make the, make the comparison and see, but you, you're making me think about some things that I experienced then that he too ripped. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I heard that. Too cut. Now, did you take a break from competition after that, Roy? 1970. Uh, yeah. From 71 to 77, is that true? Yeah, 1972, I went back to Barbados, quit my job at the Hilton. Okay. I didn't quit right away. I went to Switzerland, competed. No. I went to Switzerland, trained in Switzerland, went to London, did that competition, went to France, came back to Barbados. When I got back to Barbados, I. I had a lot of things going on, and I, I gave up the job job at the Hilton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, emigrated to Canada. My sister came there, and she said, "You should come to Canada. There are a lot, a lot of bodybuilders there. We we'll beat them." Uh, really? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I and, and Ben has his offices here, so I think the headquarters are yeah. not too far from my house. I said, "Oh, that's enough." <laughs> Got came came to came to came to Canada, and that's it. I trained. Didn't train right away. Had to find a job. Had to find a house. Had to find some, you know. Had to find. Had to get something going. I didn't come here just to train. So right. I ran. That's how I ran into Caruso. One year after I was here, I got involved with with um, professional wrestling. Oh okay. And uh, training had to be a professional wrestler. Good job. A lot of girls, stuff. Mm -hmm. So the guy who was running the gym was a photographer. Called Caruso. Yeah. Caruso, he used to run the gym for the wrestlers. Okay. So they had a weight training part and a wrestling part. It was called the Grand Prix Wrestling. And um, I went in there and they looked at me and said, you, you, You're wrestling? Yeah. You, you, you can compete, you know. I, I, prefer, I prefer wrestling. There's no money in that. So Jimmy said, It could be. 
Because if you have a good physique as a wrestler, that can also sell. He was thinking this to me. Yeah. Still actually. And I I trained, did a few wrestling competitions, did a few tours and made a few dollars. I was working as a bouncer at night. Mm-hmm. Doing very well. And bouncing was not like it is now. You still got you, you weren't in fear of your life. Yeah. If right. if you could fight it's fun. Yeah. And I miss if you could fight man it was good living. Yeah. But uh no, it's a good bet. Anyway, uh, I, I worked there for I worked at that for a while, and one day, Jimmy said to me, "Roy, look, you should compete. Come back to competition, man. You have it. That's yeah. still there. Yeah. Come with me. I'll train you. You'll do everything I tell you. If you if you promise if you do everything I tell you, train free. Hmm. Train free. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I do whatever you want, man. So." He wrote my programs for me and he supervised some of my training and he said, in October you will win, Mr. Campbell. Yeah. How can you, how can you say that? So, and it's the word getting around that this Jimmy's training this guy, this guy who used to be a wrestler, he's training him in Montreal and he's going to win the Canada. And somebody wrote us an anonymous letter. I was keeping this, I, I'm going to talk, talk to you honestly because some of this thing I'm, I was thinking about writing a book. Okay. And as you can say, as you can see, how long it took us to hook up. I'm very lazy and or busy, but that time I was lazy. <laughs> no, I have more to do. Anyway, and uh, I said, uh, somebody wrote us a letter and said, we know this guy in Montreal is big. We know that. We see him wrestling. We we think we think he yeah he he's he's gonna be the best there. But Canada is not right re- re- quite ready for a black Mister Canada. So forget that. Hmm. So Jimmy showed me the letter. And then he said, let me tell you something. Don't let this discourage you. They will not call anybody out for one comparison against you. When you yeah. get there. Come right. on, you be stupid. <laughs> Just like that. And um, do you know he was true? Yeah. Right. I went yeah. to Canada. I was not called out for one comparison. And I said, hey, pff, I'm going to lose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose. Let me know how that turned out. So I trusted Jimmy immensely. He, I trusted him even more. Yeah. Because yeah. He said we have to, we have to prepare for France. No, I don't want you eating any hamburgers. I don't want you eating this. You have to go to France and you have to win. You have to win. You will be the first Canadian ever to win in Miss Universe. Wow. You have to. If you win, bodybuilding in Canada will take off. Mm-hmm. Ben said the same thing, God bless him. And um. I went there three weeks later, three weeks after we won to Canada, and I won the World Championship. Wow. I haven't seen it. The, first, the first time it was in Nîmes, Nîmes, France. Yeah. First time they called it the Miss, the World Champion. So they had written, I remember they had it written on the trophy, um, Champion Mondial, World Champion 19, uh, Champion Mondial 1977. Hmm. World Champion 1977. Wow. Yeah. Not Mr. They, they, they tried to change it because at the time Ben was trying to get us into the Olympics. Right, right, right. And I uh, think they changed everything. They wanted to change up everything to weight debates and categories. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I started bodybuilding in 1977, and I remember reading uh, Muscle Mag International, which was in Canada, and they had the pictures. Right. Of the, they had the the pictures of the Canadian Championships, and that was I think okay. the first time I saw you, and I was like, wow, who? Because it was like you were up here. And everyone else was down here. You were so much more muscular yeah. and more developed than everybody. I was always saying, yeah. yeah. I didn't, you see? I didn't see it that way. I just was happy. At that age, I would have been about 20-something. I don't discuss age, but <laughs> I was still, still in my mid-20s, late 20s. Yeah. And I thought that was so cool. I, I didn't care about anything else. Yeah. I saw it just as for what it is. Good fun. Right. Heart meaning, you know, it's just like it. Yeah. I also saw Maybe. you. I saw you in person, Roy, at the um, Mister Olympia that year because you were in the Mister International, correct? And you won uh, the heavyweight yeah. class that Mohammed yeah. McAway won the overall, right? Yeah. yeah. Don't 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 tell me about it. Because <laughs> <laughs> then, by that time, I I was getting a big head, you know. So I thought I could have should have won the overall. I know yeah. I thought I could have. I didn't think I did. I knew that Matt McCoy was better. So I'm backstage. I made sure I positioned myself in the mirror uh-huh. next to him or close to him. I said, oh, he's got it. Oh, really? So I, I, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, 
I am not a. I don't think I should be everything, man. I, I, I matured a little bit by then. Yeah. And thankfully, I didn't really let it get out of hand, or maybe the people around didn't let didn't let me get out of hand. Mm-hmm. So I side them up, and I don't know. And then yeah. Then myself have your category and go home. Yeah, I thought you both looked outstanding. I mean, I remember that was the first time I'd seen you in person, and man, you were really, really impressive. Uh, I thought you were just as good as some of the Mr. Olympia competitors that night. Yeah? Yeah. Boys. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, it was after that show that you won the Mr. Universe, right? In, in Nimes, France? Yeah. Right after yeah, that? Okay. Yeah. You're well prepared, man. But you know, um, you're going to tell me some things that I would have skipped over. But yes, that that I, I, it was a good it was a good testing ground. Jimmy said anyway. Yeah. We compete that Olympic. It was a good test for you. It's not it's not the Mr. Canada now. You get an idea of this international thing. Yeah. So that's went down. That's why it went down. You're right. Yeah. Then a uh, week later, I think it was a week later. Two weeks later, we went out to France. Mm-hmm. So how was that experience, winning the Mr. Universe? That had to be an incredible uh, achievement for you after all those years of competing, huh? Uh, then I was still living a dream. Yeah. I never thought that this guy from a little 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 village in Barbados would be all these things. Really, I, I, I didn't wait until I became this age to realize what had happened. That all those things came at me at the same time. Mm-hmm. And um, because right after I won the Universe in France, some gentleman from Greece Jesus, invited myself and Jimmy to come to Greece and guest pose at the Mr. Greece. Okay. The next I said, Greece? Wow. But I have to go back to work. I was, <laughs> at, I was working at craft at the time. Okay. And he said, no, no, take a chance and get, just get some proof. Call them and tell them you've been, you've won and you've been held up because you won and we'll come back a week later. And we went to Greece. So I saw, <laughs> I saw another country in Europe just by winning a competition, and yeah. I think they were giving a what did they give me at that time? Two thousand some dollars. Wow. That's a, yeah. That's pretty good for nineteen seventy-seven. Yeah, pretty good. Oh, yes. Six months working camp, so <laughs> <laughs> at that time, take, right. take this. Right. So then I realized the, that this pork could, could really feed me. Yeah. Yeah. That was serious. Did you notice yeah. a lot of a lot of changes in the sport, Roy, from uh, 1970, 71 to 1977? Because it had been like a six-year layoff. I didn't notice much. I, I didn't take much notice. I just went back as a competitor. Okay. I just saw myself as a competitor. I, I didn't see a lot of different... Yes, yes, yes. You had to be more defined. Okay. Because I remember going into the dressing room when, when, I, when, when I was with Rick Ben in New, New York, and he said to me, um, Roya, uh, so what shape are you in? I said, I weigh 220, man. He said, are you ripped? <laughs> <laughs> I said, what the hell is that? I said, I weigh 220, I'm big. He said, but are you ripped? I didn't know what he was talking about. <laughs> I said, oh, but I, was deep. I had a little bit of definition, but the, that time the veins, the, the, the whole veins thing started. Right, right. The absence of too much body fat. That it started then. Yeah, so there was it was a little bit of difference, yeah. yeah. That was the difference I noticed. And this is why I was told you I was so shocked in 71. When the judge said to me, uh, Sergio was too... <laughs> too too real. Yeah. <laughs> too I right. couldn't understand. But that was his mentality, I guess. Yeah. He right. was really old school. He belonged to... He should have judged John Grimmett and those guys. Right, right. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. What did you weigh for the uh, Mr. Universe, Roy? Because I noticed it was the middleweight class because they only had lightweight, middleweight, and heavyweight, and you were in the middleweight, and you looked way too big to be a middleweight, so I was wondering like, what the weight limit was. Do you remember? I don't want to waste your time. Um, I remember we weighed in the morning. This is why, as I keep saying, if you have a coach, listen to listen to him. Yeah. I, we had to weigh the morning before. The, sorry, the evening before was the weighing. Mm-hmm. And I was three pounds over... One and a half kilos, something like that. Okay. And Jimmy said to me, really, this might sound a very old school approach to, to, to this, but Jimmy said to me, I don't want you in the heavyweight. You will be a small heavyweight. What I want, listen, from this moment on, I don't want you even swallowing your own saliva. <laughs> wow. 
this is a true story. Yeah. And I didn't. Wow. And the next morning I went downstairs and I weighed 198. Wow. Okay. On the button. Yeah. It came off. He had some uh, those those uh, French pears waiting for me. Uh huh. He said, "Eat two of these now." Huh. And that's it's true. <laughs> did true. You feel, that's a true story. Did you feel pretty confident in the victory at that show? Of course not. No. Of course not. Um, there was a guy I met in Barbados called Darcy Beckles, and there was a guy from Czech Republic called. Peter Stash. Yeah. Yeah. You're bringing back memories, man. Yeah. <laughs> I love the... Uh, they, I, they, they'll be me. I said it to myself, but I couldn't tell that to Jimmy. Yeah. So after the prejudging was over, he came and said... My mentor came over and said to me, I think Beckles may beat you. Really? Yeah. And uh, I didn't take it personally. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy came and said, Roy, I don't think that uh, they can they'll touch you. It's going to be close, yeah. but you should win it. Yeah. That's Jimmy. Yeah. I believe everything he said. So I believed him and went up there and he proposing he even posed like a winner. And I'll never forget that. It was, I That contest freaked me out because when I won, I broke down on stage. Oh, really? Wow. I, yeah. I only saw pictures of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't collapse like Ronnie Coleman did, but right, right. My knee, my knee's not all weak, man. Yeah, my knee, the world champion. Come on. <laughs> and Darcy was uh, Albert's uh, cousin, right? Yep. Yeah. That's how a small country it was. Yeah. <laughs> it still is. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, Darcy's. He's doing quite well. I heard he's still alive, right? Yeah. But in Barbados, quite, and I go there quite often. He's still around. Okay. What did you think of uh, the Mike Mentzer Cal Scalac uh, contest uh, in the heavyweights? Did you think that was pretty controversial? Yeah, I, I was a Mentzer guy that day. Uh huh. More, well, more, more complete to Yeah. Was my, was my point. Yeah. Um, Cal, as you know, had, and I like them both, huh? Yeah. But Cal had calf problems. Mm hmm. Well, next to Mike Mentzer, he did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it didn't it didn't go down very well. And then is when I noticed, hey, this bodybuilding community is not as it's not as friendly as I thought it was. You know? Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. There was a little bit of heat exchange and an embarrassing moment for the viewers because Calvin let him even raise his hand. Oh really? It was this, huh. Oh yeah, he pulled his hand from Ben's. And, oh really? Oh. Rest Oh, yeah, he tugged his hand away. I was there. Why did he do that? Because he didn't like the weeders? He didn't like... Maybe. I think that was it. Yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> he wouldn't have his hand. You know. Wow. <laughs> That's true. Wow, okay. <laughs> so did, Ben uh, just stood there. Ben, ben just, Ben, God rest him. He just stood there and smiled. He <laughs> And uh, the picture walked off. Wow. Did, uh, did Mike and Cal have any problems with each other? Never witnessed it. No? Okay. No, I haven't witnessed it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, um, going into the next year, in 1978, you were now a professional bodybuilder. And uh, you competed against Robbie Robinson in the very first night of the champions in New York City, right? In May? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and you took second but place. You beat all the uh, established pros like Boyer Co. and yeah. uh, Steve Mihalak and uh, Bill Grant yeah. and all those guys. Dennis Dorino. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, that was memorable for me, man, because all of these guys I was reading about. Yeah. In my, I will never beat those guys. They're in magazines. Yeah. That was the mentality I had. Um, but I was around. I was around Jimmy Caruso, but he would never let me think like that. Mm -hmm. Just, they're just ordinary guys, man. I take their picture all the time. They can't beat you. <laughs> Don't think. Da, 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 da. And. Uh, after after the night of the champions, <laughs> I I think I had to give him a to my trainer. I gave him five percent. Okay. Okay. Of my purse, and I said to him, "Man, you this seems like peanuts. What you've done for me, man." Yeah, right. Right. Give a lot of confidence, but he said, "No, no, no. You got a lot more to do. You're not done." 
yeah. And then, yeah, so that was my first real realization. You know, Roy, you can compete with these guys. Yeah. My thing at, at that time, you, at that time, I don't know if you had that that in your mind. You probably wouldn't, but at that time, I said, "Oh, if they're in magazines, they gotta be good." Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh man, this stupid guy. Who's a stupid kid? <laughs> What'd you think of Robbie? Because that was your first time competing against him. A determined guy. Until today, I think, and I still see him on Facebook and stuff sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah. Very purposeful. Mm -hmm. Very purposeful. Um, we competed at a, a competition in Philadelphia once. It was on by George Snyder, I think. Yeah. It was all the greatest bodybuilder, greatest, world's greatest professional bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And... After the competition, a lot of Canadians, well, a whole uh, bus, a bus, some Canadians ran the bus in Montreal and drove there to see me. Okay. They ran, I said, this is amazing. Um, and uh, they were, I had a cheering section, so they cheered, they, they thought they should have won. Uh -huh. So Robbie got cheered and said, Roy, don't listen to them, man, don't listen. You're close, you're getting there, but today I was a bit harder. <laughs> and yeah, and he was. You were you you got it. You got to get some more definition in your thighs. We sat and talked for a while. You showed me a few things I should do. Wow. That's how we. Yeah. It was nothing. I didn't come back bitter or anything like that. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't take the trophy with me. But yeah. That's the Canadian came back on the bus. Canadian took it back on the bus with him. <laughs> came back. Okay. So, um, this. I thought he won. Yeah. He was a bodybuilder longer than I was. Yeah. But at some point, I think I came back and got him. I can't remember when. But I know I got him at some point. He would have had. He would have. He would have all those records. I yeah, don't keep yeah, those. Yeah. I don't know. I got him some. I know I got him. I know I got him. I can't remember if it was the Pro Universe in Australia or the Diamond Cup. I don't think it was the Diamond Cup. I got him. I know yeah. I got him. <laughs> a couple of competitions later. Roy, it seems like the bodybuilders back then were really, uh, there was a lot of camaraderie because like, you know, what Robbie said to you, he, he gave you encouragement, he showed you some exercises to do, and it seems like it was like that oh, yeah. in the 70s also, you know, where guys were, oh, yeah. you know, like you and Arnold staying together and stuff like that. I mean, that, that yeah. seems like it's really a great time back in the sport. Yeah, of course. Um, now, let's guess with the size of the purses. <laughs> yeah, the size of the egos grew, and that 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 camaraderie would go out the door. Nobody wants to share anything with anybody else because the edge could be a millimeter, millicentimeter, millicentimeter, half millimeter. The edge yeah. could be that much. Nobody right. wants to give it anything away. Right, right. And they keep it for themselves. Not not at that time. They're coming out. Everybody helped. Yeah. Now, um, a couple months later, you went, you competed in July in the. Uh the Pro World Championships in uh, California, I believe, right? Gold's Gym was promoting that, and you got second again to uh, Robbie. The Gold Classic. Yeah, the Gold Classic, um, yeah. Gold's Classic, I got third. Oh, you got third, okay. And Danny got second. Oh, okay, okay. I may be wrong. If your records show that I was uh, second, then that was it. I think it was another competition. I got second to Robbie and Danny got I got second. I got third to Danny. Okay. But yeah, I think I was somewhere around there. That is a competition Rick Wayne came to. Mm -hmm. Came backstage and said to me, Roy, uh, so uh, you ready to drive a new Cadillac? <laughs> I said, don't be stupid. <laughs> said, I'm serious. How would you look for you driving a new Cadillac? Because the Cadillac was the first prize. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, I tell you what, Rick. If I win this Cadillac, you 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 take it. I'll take the two thousand five hundred dollars, whatever it was. But you can take the Cadillac. <laughs> I meant it too. Uh huh. I meant it. But but that wasn't to be. Yeah, I was second. You're right. Yeah. Now after that it's, show, did you feel like uh, you were going to be a good? You had a good shot at the Olympia because you know you were getting better and better, and uh, you were beating a lot of these established pros. Yeah, but I figured it would take me another. It would take me another year. I would have to compete. I think I would have to do another couple of Olympias, and I, I, I I'll get it. Yeah. This is what I was thinking. I'll get it. Yeah. 
1979, I I hurt my I hurt thought hurt training in uh I was training with Louis, and we were doing T bar rows right there by the door. As you come upstairs, uh, trying to picture it in the in the first uh, world gym. Uh huh. And uh, I hurt my back doing that. We were trying to see who could outdo each other. I remember quite well. And that that messed up my challenge for the 1979 Olympia. As a matter of fact, I had to creep onto the stage at the 1977. I remember. I, I was at that show. I, I remember that. I remember you were in a lot of pain. Oh man, you wouldn't understand that. And, uh, ee. and I said, okay, I missed, messed up. Um, I will not make that mistake again. I will be ready for 1980. Now, who are you, who are you doing the T-bar rows with, Louis Frigo? Yeah. Oh, really? We used to mess that. We used to see who could do. Oh man. Such beautiful days. <laughs> Who could do that without do that? No. Just having fun. Yeah, yeah. I remember we would put a dollar in. If you cannot make the rep, you put in a dollar. <laughs> so whoever at the end would take up the hat, you know? Oh, really? <laughs> That's cool. Now, what, let me uh, talk about your training a little bit, Roy, because uh, you had a really, really thick muscular physique. Um, so I would imagine that... Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I would I would always imagine that you did a, like a lot of basic movements with barbells and dumbbells and kind of heavy weight in order to build that mass because you had really good thickness and size. Still do I is not it's not what I did then. If you well you know what I'm talking about, so I think you can explain it better to others other people than me. Um, the training wasn't different from today. It wasn't different if you look at it logically. Mm -hmm. It is what guys with big thick muscle mass still do today. Yeah. Uh, what what I was reading about myself is that I would train for seven hours at a time. I have never heard anything so ridiculous. <laughs> but when when someone would get up at the seminar and ask me, Roy, uh, did you really to get this thing? You heard you train seven hours a day. I said, but it's that's humanly impossible. <laughs> yeah, but we heard it. We read it. We heard that you said it. I said, well, take it from me now. <laughs> I never trained. <laughs> that, so, I, no, I used to, that was the Rick Wayne, Jimmy Caruso, Arnold Schwarzenegger influence. Yeah. Plus, not leave anything in the bottle. And today the guys train that way as well, the top ones. Yeah. They don't leave anything in the bottle. When you do a set, you do a set. You don't just say, oh, I've done four. Right. Finished. Right. Right. As long as they maintain the technique, they will take it, to, take it to the ceiling. You have to. Yeah. You have to stimulate growth, and you know that story. So. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. Which so part? I think that the thickness comes. The thickness is a manifestation of how you train. Mm -hmm. Now you have to eat. But I mean, forget the eating part. No, don't forget the eating part. <laughs> the eating part, is the foundation. But the it still is manifested in the way that muscle is forced to work. Right. The true the, that is still true today and will never change. Yeah. Now, what exercises did you do for your back, uh, Roy? Because I, when I interviewed Lee Haney. He mentioned that you and uh, Robbie Robinson were big influences on his training when he first started because he was talking about your back and how thick your back was, especially on the bottom part where the lower lats attached. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, and uh, he trained at my club in Barbados. And he, he told me the same thing. He told me, he paid me he's a very respectful guy. He said to me, Roy, uh, this, year, this year I'm going to be doing your pose. The cut the calendar pose. <laughs> so I'm telling you now, because I'm not, I will not be paying you any rights. <laughs> and the reason, why, the reason why I'm going to do the pose is because I think your back, your back is one of the best I've ever seen from an aesthetic point standpoint, and not only aesthetic because it's thick, it is thick from the bottom. Yeah. And it suits. I think I have the development now. I will have it to to do a pose like that. And uh, he did it. Who said but that? Lee, I, Lee Haney said that, right? Lee, he was in Barbados, yeah. Yeah, he was okay. With him. <laughs> and Ivan, if he was there at the time. Um, but I think it is not so much. I just like doing back. That's all I can tell you. I just love doing it. Yeah. The young body will like doing chest. Yeah. I love doing back. Okay. And uh, I will always superset it with. And Arnold had taught me this. Yeah, you like, you like, I like you working back because when you turn around, the competition is won or lost. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, but always, what I would suggest you do, Roy, is to superset any back exercise you do with a calf exercise. Oh. And for the first time in the 1981 Olympia, 
That was the year I took that, that advice. Julian Blomart, the Belgian judge. Yeah. Came up to me and said, Roy, I, I have you first. I can't give you... I, I always picked on your calves, I'll be honest. I always said I will never vote for you unless your calves are up. Right. But your calves are up. <laughs> He, he turned and walked away. He said, you surprised me. I didn't know you could do that with your calves. Wow. And then, and then there, am I now thinking, yes, I got it. <laughs> I'm going back to my room. I didn't say anything to anyone. Yeah. I think I got it this time. But we all know what happened at the 81. Right, right. So <laughs> Arnold told you to superset a calf exercise with a back exercise. So you must have been doing um, probably 20 sets for your calves then, huh? They needed it. I didn't do it every day, so I didn't do back every day. So by the time yeah. I finished doing a back day, they needed yeah. that time yeah. to recover as small as they were and as tough as they were. Right. Um, yes, yes, that advice came from But it came from Rick Wayne in the initial stages. If you remember, I told you Rick Wayne said, I want you to do calves, but right. I would do everything except right. calves. Right. Young kids just looking at biceps. <laughs> that was me. Well, Roy, let's talk about the uh, 78 Olympia because we skipped over that. That was your very first Mr. Olympia, and you got uh, third place overall. You got second to Robbie in the over 200-pound class, and then uh, Frank Zane won his second Mr. Olympia, but Robbie goes second, and you were third. Yeah. Um, you're looking at me now with a head that's very small. But after that thing, my head got really big. <laughs> not, dis not disrespectful yeah. at all. Right. I never, that was disrespectful. But I said, my goodness, Frank Zane, Robbie, and me? Right. Me, my goodness. <laughs> um, uh, and in Barbados, they all went crazy. And in Canada, they all went crazy. And uh, that I remember very well because <laughs> I knew it was okay, but this, that was my first Olympia. Yeah, I know. I your said, very first Olympia. Oh, wait. No, I'm going to be satisfied with fifth. I don't care. I'm up here. It's Mr. Olympia. This is Mr. Olympia. I, right. I didn't really care about position. Yeah. But I, I didn't sleep for a couple of days after that. Wow, yeah. Yeah, you beat them. No, I was very, very happy, man. You have no idea. I didn't expect to be there. Um, I came from, I told you the story of when I came from Barbados. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I'm not a, a pessimist. I'm not a pessimist, but I never expected expected too much even though I worked so hard. Yeah. The work I enjoyed. Yeah. The expectations uh, the top of themselves. Yeah. So uh, going into the next the next year in seventy nine, um, like you said, you uh, I think you won the Diamond Cup that year, right? You beat Chris Dickerson and Boyer Co. Yeah, but this seventy nine I had traveled to Australia two okay. months previous. And two months previously and I won the professional Mr. Universe. Oh that's Sydney. right. That's right. Yeah. And I came back to Montreal, did a few guest posing appearances, a lot of seminars. Mm -hmm. And uh, Caruso said, you, what are you doing? You didn't, did you train yesterday? No. Did you train yesterday? No. What are you doing? I was in Quebec. I was doing this. Listen, the Diamond Cup is coming up next week, two weeks from now. You better be ready. It's a $20,000 diamond, huh? Wow. So I got my attention. <laughs> Uh, at that time, it's a diamond and this trophy, and I said, okay, I'll go, but I think Robbie's going to be there. He said, I don't think Robbie's going to come. But I heard Larry Scott is coming. I hear yeah. his diction is coming, and uh, I can remember, eh? And I said, okay, I'll go. I, I started training like that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever taken it that seriously because the time was short. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't get out of shape because... After that comes after the Olympic because I had to get my I didn't really get out of shape. I was doing guest posing appearances and appearances in schools. So if you go to school, you take off your shirt and you have a you know you're not in shape. If you don't want to turn off the kids. Yeah, yeah. So I really kept my shape. So it wasn't easy. It wasn't difficult to turn the heat up again. And I was ready by the time I got to the Diamond Cup. Yeah, that's right. I forgot Larry Scott made his comeback in that contest, right? Well, you 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 can forget. Yeah. But I will not. Yeah. I will never, ever forget that moment. You wow. kidding me? Yeah. Like, what to me, people look at you and say, oh, you haven't heard so much about you, you're a legend, and uh, shake your hand. Oh, I would have bowed down to him. I did. This wow. guy, come on. First 20 inch time I ever saw in a magazine, I couldn't even afford magazines. And yeah, I, and yeah. He was, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a very special time. Yeah. Meet him, I didn't care about anything else. Yeah. The competition. But, 
him to be honest on the same stage as Larry Scott. If anybody if any bodybuilder at that time wasn't proud to be on the same stage as him, it should be there. Yeah, right. That's my And he was a really nice guy too, right? When you met him? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, uh, okay, no, I mean, you know, no, so how do you like bodybuilding? You know, this is, this is a good thing. He said, but you inspired me to do this, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just keep it up, keep level-headed. Good advice, soft-spoken. Yeah. Not a big, yeah. I don't know if he's died a lot, but someone like that, if someone like that died, it's, it's a good person that died. He's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember the first time I met him, he was like that, too. He was like, he really talk to you as a, like he really cared about what you had to say, you know, like you yeah. he's really there for yeah. you, you know. Yeah, he listened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You didn't do him, Larry Scott, you know, goodbye, it was nice to meet you. Right, right. Now forget it. Yeah. But I, I try to conduct myself the same as, this is why I was, I think I'm so lucky to have met people like that, Larry mm-hmm. Scott, Frank Zane, I was so lucky to have met people like that. Yeah. And at that, that time, we started getting big heads. Mhm. Mhm. Was around that time, so. Yeah. Well, not those days. So then, uh, the Olympia that year was sort of a bad year for you, right? Because you hurt your back. Mhm. Big time, yeah. Yeah. yeah to that. I can still feel it. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was rough. Yeah. Rough because the preparation I had made in San Jose, and then to come there and oh, disappoint so many people who come down from Canada and stuff. Mhm. So. Lousy, lousy, lousy year. Yeah. Lousy most of the year. The year was pretty good. Was uh was Franco backstage? Did he help you? Did he give you the adjustment? I heard that. I heard that uh, in the magazines. Oh, that's true. Was that true? Yeah, you heard that? Yeah, yeah. I remember reading that in the magazines. I, he tried to adjust me. Yeah. He was chiropractic at the time. Right. And he so he tried to fix it, but it he would fix it and then I'd get up. Oh no, oh no. It feel good and then I'd move and out it goes. Yeah. Uh, but then another doctor from Barbados, Dr. C, he came and he tried. You know, I'd get up and the moment I stood upright. Wow. Back it goes. Mm. So you must have really hurt it bad, huh? Yeah, it's, you do stupid things. You don't see it stupid at the time, you see it as fun. Yeah. But um, if it's stupid, it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I paid. It was a moment I'd never forget. I paid for it. Yeah. So how long did that back injury bother you, right? Oh, uh, not too much longer. I got a break. Like I said to you, these things happen. I got a break. I started six or eight weeks later. I started coming back. Okay. I didn't. I didn't do a lot of things. And then I went off to Germany to do some guest posing appearances and some seminars. Mm-hmm. This was. This was in 1980. Okay. I was there. And um, I injured it again. At a, at a, I was at the gym and in his training, this kid came up and said, uh, Ro- Mr. Roy, can I have your autograph? So I turned, gave him the autograph, and turned back to the counter and drinking my water. And then the guy said, Okay, come on, Roy, let's go eat now. We're ready to go. I could move from the counter. Wow. Hmm. I could move. So they had to send for an ambulance, and the ambulance came. Oh, and they man, me really? Wow. Put me to that. So, let's take him to Dr. Fall. I'll never forget this guy. Dr. Fall was an escapee from the East. Uh-huh. The right recognized in Berlin. In, sorry, in Essen. And uh, he took me to his clinic and he looked at me, he touched my back and he grabbed it. <sighs> then he cut some needle and put it in there. And then he got on top of my back He said, all sorts of thoughts went through my mind. I said, oh, <laughs> This nurse came in, she put some big hot pack on my back, and I started to sweat, and by, it was there for about five, ten minutes, and then she came in and put a big cold one. And he said to me, okay, Roy, uh, you'll be good now. What I don't want you doing, I would like you to do a little bit more work on your abdominals. You, your abdominals need some work. Huh. Don't, eat, don't, eat, don't have anything cold for the next three days. Hmm. Four days or so, and uh, you'll be okay. But just don't go bending over. But after four days, you can resume your training as normal. And it did. Hmm. It did. It was uh, great. And then it was summer in Germany. Yeah. So I was in my fair, and I stopped. And you know what I did? I told you that you're dumb. I took an ice cream and started. <laughs> eating it. 
Oh man, this started licking on it. Halfway through the ice cream, my back started to hurt me. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> sitting down in the car, I don't think I can get out. So I went back to Dr. Paul. He said, Didn't I tell you not to eat ice cream? <laughs> so he, 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 he turned around a little bit. He said, No, you'll be okay. Let your body warm over. So he warmed my body over, adjusted it again, and said, Don't come back here, okay? Not before you go to Canada. So I. Yeah, I knew he was a patron of a hospital over there, so I got some pictures together. Mm-hmm. Went to the hospital with some pictures to the sick children's hospital. And I, I walked to the hospital with my shirt off, my t shirt. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, and gave the kids autographs and shook their hands and pat their heads. Yeah. Oh, uh, they were happy. <laughs> because he, he never asked me for a penny. Wow. He, Unbelievable. No. I gave him an autograph picture and. Uh, a few days later, after I left Germany, he wrote me a big letter thanking me for going to the hospital. Wow, that's great. Huh. That sounds like he knew what he you was have, doing. You have to do those things. You yeah, yeah, for sure. And like I said, when I came home, I came home in 80, in pretty good shape. Um, went to San Jose. <laughs> went to Australia, you know what happened. Yeah, let's you talk know. about that, right? Let's talk about Australia. So, you were in the Mr. Olympia in Sydney, Australia. Not much to say. Not much to say. <laughs> Not, <laughs> Not much, much to say. say. <laughs> <I'm gone>. <laughs> My God. <laughs> so you were in that show. Did you know? Uh, did you know beforehand that Arnold was going to compete in it? Yeah, you of did? course. He told me. He told me. Yeah, he told me. Oh, he told you. Okay. Uh, I can say that now. Yeah. Um, he told me more more likely than not I'll be there. Hmm. So you should do this, and you should do this, and you should make sure you have this and that and the other. So if I'm not there, you still have to make sure that you're you're doing this and you're okay. So when we turned up to get on the flight for us to Sydney, mm-hmm. Arnold was there with Gold and a few other guys. And I said, hmm, hmm. Hmm. so he's not going there. I said, so you're going to compete? He said, I don't know. Maybe I'll see in the audience. Okay, Arnold. You just <laughs> told me that you're going to go. Now you told me you don't know. Well, which is it? <laughs> yeah, I, I, too sure. I don't. I don't. I think he was trying to size up the guys or get into their heads or something. Yeah, yeah. So we went backstage with Maria. When we got there, I remember he came into the dressing room. He said he's going to compete. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a decision made privately, I guess, even uh-huh. before he stepped on the plane. Uh huh. And it was intended as a surprise. Keep everybody guessing. Yeah. So when he in the dressing room. And I see him coming down the stairs with Maria. I said, okay, uh, he's going to compete. He walked in the dressing room, went in the corner and started warming up. Hmm. And that I think that is what caused the arena to be filled. Yeah, yeah. And Sydney Opera House is not small. Right, right. Hey, Roy, talk, everybody heard. talk a little bit about that meeting also, the meeting where they had the, uh, with all the competitors, where they're talking about having uh, two classes in the Mr. Olympia again or, or going to one class. And Arnold and uh, Mike Metzer got into it a little bit. Do you remember that? You remember we said at the beginning of our conversation that when they first came into bodybuilding, there was no animosity. Yeah. I witnessed it firsthand there. Mm-hmm. Um, you could feel it. Yeah. You could feel it in the room, and I, that's not me. Yeah. I didn't like what I was feeling. Um, Mike, he's not with us anymore, but he didn't particularly like... Arnold's rhetoric a lot, mm-hmm. and he let it known. He let it be known. Um, I don't think Frank did either because when had since Frank had beaten Arnold, they had become good friends. And Arnold liked when he was winning the, the three Olympias in a row. And then he made one mistake. He made one mistake. Arnold just said to him in the interview, "So Frank, what does it feel like to win your third Olympia?" I would have said, "Man, it feels like heaven. I'd like to get a six, something like that." Yeah. Frank said, to "Arnold." It feels just like when I beat you in Florida. Right. You don't say those things. Man. Right, right. And I say, love Frank, you don't say those things. Don't say them to Arnold. <laughs> right, Mm-mm. He right. didn't ever forget. And they didn't speak since that day. Really? Wow. No. Since that day, they didn't speak. Hmm. And, when they, and so then there was something also in Frank's mind about the Arnold competing. And that nobody said it's going to be fixed. Everybody thought, well, we're going to whoop him. Yeah. Not me, but other guys thought Mike thought he was going to beat him. Boyer thought he was going to beat him. Mm-hmm. Frank thought he was going to beat him. 
Yeah. I'm gonna be no turned out. It wasn't. It was a little bit embarrassing. Mm-hmm. But and because it was, it was filmed for ABC Television. It never made. It never made the television. Right. Right. They it never showed it. Yeah. That was embarrassing. That was embarrassing. Yeah. So the mission was accomplished. I don't know if it was to say to the guy, "Listen, I don't care what you say about me. I can come back and I can beat you in an outshape. shape." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we we always have a big feast after that feast was on a boat. Uh huh. And the only people there were Tom Platts and myself. Really? That was it. <laughs> no one else. Yes. But again, Tom Platt, my my girlfriend at the time, and uh, well, yes, I'm talking about from our community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the bodybuilding community was not well represented. Wow. Okay. I think a corny event, but it wasn't well represented. Yeah. So what did you think of Arnold's physique when you saw him, when you saw him get up on stage or when you saw him backstage pumping up? I was scared. Yeah? Yeah, because I see he's going to get beaten. I don't want that to happen. Yeah, yeah. I don't want that to happen. That's how I felt. Hmm. Did you feel he was... So in a way, in a way, I was glad it didn't happen. Yeah. And another way I thought, this is not, you're going to take a black eye for this thing. Uh-huh. And we did. But uh I felt scared. I like the guy and I we go way back and I go way back. Yeah, yeah. He's always helped me, so um I see you don't want this to happen. I didn't want this to happen. It's twenty years later, man. I used to say I don't want that to happen at all. But it happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people said that there's no need to talk about it. It was the judging panel, I thought, was not a very experienced one. Mm-hmm. But whether they were experienced or not, if they were told what to do and had to happen this way, fine. Yeah. Um, but don't let us, don't let us go there thinking we have a chance. Yeah. But then you can't. There's no other way to do it. Yeah. Uh, he was asked to come, and he was probably promised that if he comes, he will win. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the promoter is still alive. The promoter's name was. Paul Graham. Yes, yeah. He was also the promoter when I won the Miss Universe, the Miss Universe. That's right, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, was a very, it was a very sad day, but I think the, the sport has recovered somewhat, although the dynamics have changed. Yeah. Uh, recovered somewhat from that. Okay. of his bodybuilding life in England, although I believe he has now returned to his native Barbados. I remember seeing him competing in the Navi Universe in the 1970s, and he always placed high in his class, but he's much improved today. biggest and best thighs. Thighs and arms. Are so how did you feel your condition was, Roy? I thought you looked great in that show. I thought that was the best you ever looked up to that point. Really? Yeah, I thought you looked um, awesome. 
So you you and uh, Roger Walker tied, right? Didn't you guys have a special pose down because you guys were tied in the in the points or something? Yes, we had to go back and have a try. I was, I was, I would have been grateful to be six. I still considered I was six, uh-huh. but for the purposes of the competition, they had to break a tie. Yeah, yeah. And I had no no talk with Roger getting six because he was he had, he had become Australian. Yeah, and it would have been good. So I was glad that he got it. Yeah. Okay. What did you think of some of the mm-hmm. other guys in the show that night, like uh, Boyer Co. and Frank Zane and Mike Menser and, and Chris Dickerson? I only remember one thing, that's anger. Um, because I was backstage, see? Yeah. So I, I remember one thing, that's a, a whole room full of anger, man. Wow. Oh, yeah. Hmm. You don't want to, you don't, you don't. Uh, that's why I said to you, it changed from a sport of real camaraderie to real... You don't need that in the dressing room. Yeah. But that is what it was, and that is what it had become in that day. Hmm. But look, look at it logically. One year later, it was forgotten. And every and your, even yours truly, I said, no. It had to, everybody forgot about it. Aaron came home, home to the universe in Philadelphia, I think. Yeah. And time passed, time heals, but that one healed really fast because everybody turned up. In Columbus the next year, mm-hmm. hoping to win, including yours truly. <laughs> I went and trained like an animal for that thing. Yeah, yeah, but say that it cannot happen two years in a row. Right. Everybody was saying that can't can't happen. Right. Way back, way back to the early nineties. To the protege. So, uh, and I suppose if I had gone quite well, they would have made a movie of it, but they didn't, they didn't come off well either. Yeah. So the same fate that befell Arnold befell Franco. Right, right. What they were trying to do was, I think they were going to make a movie or create a comeback story, but you didn't want to have to come, a comeback story and people are showing their bottle on stage and stuff. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so did, did uh, Boyer Co. and uh, Mike Menser, did they call you and tell you not to do the show? Because I, I heard they were uh, sort of trying to do like a sort of a boycott before the 81 Olympia. So you think I'm going to lie to you? No. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, they did, yeah. They did, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody else called. Boy, Cole called for sure in Southern accent. We can't go to this thing. Don't remember that. But I was into my preparation. Yeah. And I didn't see it that way. And I still considered, I still held Arnold the same way in my heart. And I knew what he had done for me. I knew what he had done for me in Europe. I know what he had done for me when I was in Florida, when mm-hmm. I was in Colombia, when I was in Columbus, when I was in California. I knew. Yeah. So I, I, mm, my loyalty still fell on on, on supporting Iron's event, and uh, well, the same thing might happen. I don't. I the same thing will happen. I said I don't see who's gonna who's gonna Franco. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> So you were really uh, motivated for that show, right, Roy? I, I was there in Columbus. I saw that contest, and I, I had seen you before it in 1977 and 78 and 79, but I never mm-hmm. saw you so aggressive as I did in 81. I mean, you were really aggressive. You were really psyched up. You were in fantastic yeah. condition. You were ripped. And I remember you standing next to Franco in the lineup, and you were showing him <laughs> his leg, your leg, and you know you were hitting most musculars. And I mean, you were really, really psyched up for that contest. Read my lips. Yes, yeah, I, I was. I, I, I think I whispered to him once. Now your legs are not there today. Forget it. <laughs> then I turned my leg and said, "Oh, flex my sartors and said, I don't. You don't have this." Yeah, yeah. Read it. This is. I did. I did. I did whisper some things. <laughs> but not, not to demean him. Yeah. I don't know if I could psych him out, but just to let him know, you know, it's not going to be like eighty. Right, right. <laughs> wrong, wrong. <laughs> he was always probably laughing at me saying, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, we all know. I thought that, I thought then, you, and, uh, you and Tom Platts and Danny Padilla were probably in your all-time, uh, lifetime best condition at that show. You're all, all three of you were in amazing shape. I believe that. Looking yeah. at it, yes. Yeah. I, I think Danny would have, I think Danny would have edged me out. 
I think I had better balance than Tom, although Tom had more, I don't know how you call it. He was more, as I say, preparation ready would be a bad word. Mm -hmm. But I think Danny really edged me. Or if it had gone to either of us, no one would have bat an eyelid. Yeah, yeah. But Tom was Tom didn't have the same balance as Danny and myself. He yeah. looked good. Yeah. So did yeah. you did you think going into the night show, Roy, after the prejudging, after you compared to everybody, did you think you're going to win? Do you think you had a really good shot at winning? Eighty one, yes. Yeah. I I had I guess I'm, I didn't disclose some private thoughts there. I thought it would have been between Danny and myself. Okay. And I was prepared, I was prepared. For Danny, I don't know how you can prepare for that because mm -hmm. he had faults. But uh, I tried. I thought I had a chance. Anything can happen. I mean, you're bigger than he is. Yeah. But that's not the point. <laughs> the guy, I don't think you can find with all your knowledge. I don't think you could have found the fault with Danny. Well, he was amazing. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. And your posing routine was really impressive too that night, Roy. You, you had a great posing routine and, uh, you know, very aggressive, like I said, and smiling a lot. Well, I was confident, and Frank had helped me with my posing routine. Frank Zane? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. He helped me with my posing routine, and um, he, he, he chose my chunks. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. It wasn't like it wasn't it wasn't bodybuilding. I don't. Then then you had a, a group of guys who they want to beat you, but they're not gonna stamp their foot in your face. Right. I right. only that only started in 1980. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, this guy told me, Roy, listen, for the first time in my life, the guy said to me, Roy, you should wear black. Yeah. You say I'm black. He said, but that's the idea. You're black. <laughs> I was glad to hear somebody say that to me that was white. <laughs> yes, you're black. <laughs> but you up there are going to look like one amazing piece of ebony. Yeah. There's not two halves of you. Yeah. One whole. You. And I, I never wore anything since. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Hmm. Makes so, sense. First time in my entire bodybuilding career I ever heard that. Yeah. And Zane, an aesthetic guy. Yes, everything had to be. Oh. Mm -hmm. He. I like it. He said I tried to match my skin to my trunk. And he said, Why are you so many see wear brown trunks? He's, he's already brown. Can you wear red? I used to be saying that, but that was my lack of experience and or knowledge. Yeah, yeah. In, in stage presentation. Hmm. But he, he is the one who's responsible for me wearing a black dress. Okay. So you did. You end up did beating uh, Danny at the final results because Danny got fifth and you got fourth. Well, I don't count the final results anymore. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. It's like Australia. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see it that way. Um, Mrs. Matuyama from Japan. I think she voted. I can't remember you, but you would probably have seen the judges' sheets. Yeah. Mrs. Matuyama from Japan. She voted Franco the winner. I don't know if she was told, but I think her sheets were forgotten. But then she invited, uh, I think Ben was the response because Ben came over and said, God rest him. He came over to me and said, Roy, um, I know you've been hard done by, but um, we make it up, man. We make it up to you, okay? I'm like, okay, whatever, Ben. Came to my hotel room the same night. Mm -hmm. Said to me, listen, I want you to go to Japan. You're going to spend about four or five months there doing seminars, and workshops. You're going to make more money than you would have made here. Wow. The Olympia. Huh. Yes, I, I did. <laughs> wow, no kidding. So he yeah, said that yeah. after the, at the night of the 81 Olympia? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Then you, I think, but then I can't say he knew that that was going to happen. Mm -hmm. One, I don't think they were prepared for where they, oh no, here we go again. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Right, and since then, I since then I don't think there have been many of our. I'm glad he was involved in the sacrifice that had to be made mm -hmm. to bring a little bit credibility or, to our sport. But despite that, we still had a, little, a few things here or there, but nothing that was really that ridiculous. Yeah, as right. AD not one, nothing, yeah. uh, nothing. Uh, we has still have, you know, we still had a little controversy with Ronnie or, you know, it, it's, but nothing of like that. Yeah. What did uh, yeah, buddy, what did still training so. What did Jimmy Caruso say after eighty one? 
Uh, I by that time I was with him. We had lost contact. Oh, okay, okay. Um, he was he was there, and he said, "You should have won." But uh, he didn't. He wasn't. He wasn't in with the friend. He said he said to me, "Come things something to the effect that I should have won." Mm-hmm. But he the wish that we were still together. Yeah, is he, he still? Think, he think, is he still alive, Roy? Oh yeah. Oh, is he? Okay. And he and he's still. He's still the same, well dressed. Yeah. Shirt and tie, long sleeves, well neat. Uh huh. Old guy, still shoot people at the gym, because he's still relevant because he teaches the basic principles. Yeah, yeah. You and I know that it's gonna go away. Right. You can develop and move on to something else, but he still teaches that, and people still believe in him. Mm-hmm. And uh, and he's he's still a, he's a bit hunched over now, but he's still respected. Yeah. How old is he age, now, right? Do you know? Like, I don't know. I'm I'm not an age guy. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I I I always teach that at, at the club too. You know, all these older, a lot of my clients. Yeah. If you if you believe in age, then don't hire me as a personal trainer. If right. you're gonna ask, I don't ask. You know, I don't care. But right. We are here to fight. We're here to fight it. We're not here to know about it. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's caught on quite well. Yeah. So. Um, you competed also in the uh, 84 Olympia, right? When uh, Lee Haney won the very first time. That time I was living in Barbados. I had a gym in Barbados. I had left Canada in 82, went home to Barbados and took an appointment there as a deputy director of sports. Okay. And uh, I started training, went and competed in 84. And uh, it wasn't the same. I no. didn't have the same, the same volume. I had a job to do. Yeah. I had to run, but it felt good to be back with the guys. Mm-hmm. A former Mr. Canada, Mr. Universe, and Mr. World, now living in Barbados, a nice round of applause for Roy Callender!
I took another I took another little break. Went to Germany and taught for a while. Um, I went all over Germany. The, the, the guy who was there, Jürgen Brand, they sent me, they've got a lot of work for me to do. A lot of seminars and guest posing appearances. Okay. I, I, I competed at the Mr. Olympia Revenge in 1987 mm -hmm. in Essen, at my yeah. hometown. Yeah. The, I think I placed fifth or fourth, I can't remember. You can check that out. Um, fifth. But that was the last time I was on stage. But the uh, I have a picture on my had a picture in my wall at the office. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was being compared with Lee Haney. Yeah, Lee Haney had won the Olympia the week before, and the very first call out was Roy Gaspari, I think. Yeah, Gaspari was second. Yeah, yeah. And LeBron. I got third. Yeah. I could have come last. I didn't care. Yeah. I didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> I was, First, we'll call the first call out, and the people at SN went crazy because they saw me as a whole <laughs> dumb boy. Right, right. <laughs> uh, that's been fun. It was a good note on which to retire, though. Yeah, yeah. What'd you, what'd, you think of, uh, what'd you think of Lee Haney? I told you, man. I always thought the guy, when I saw him first in New York, mm -hmm. yeah. I said, he's going to be around for a while. Yeah. He is going to be around for me. And he was. Yeah, yeah. Still around, looking better than all of us today. He's very really cool. Yeah, right. He's a class. Class. Hey, Roy Kellenor. Keep on pushing, baby. Like I've never known. I just want to see you on the floor Want a superstitious woman She got a superstitious mind I can see you, baby I can see you I want a superstitious one with a super 
Dankeschön, Roy Kalender. Also the gentleman after that man and wipe the oil off my skin, so put my chaps to my shorts in the garbage. Oh really? <laughs> And everybody said, Roy, what are you doing, man? And I said, I'm done. This is the end of the road for me, guys. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about? We have to do Spain. We have to do, we have to do Barcelona. We have to do the two. At that time, we were starting a professional circuit. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, yeah. And two more cities to do. You can go there and pick up another five, six thousand. I said, uh, you're going to win. If Lee is not there, Rich is going home. Lee is going home. You're going to win. I said, that doesn't matter. <laughs> Leave. So I can't remember who it was. So he, I don't know if I could use these words to you, but you can probably edit them. He said, well, uh, if you don't fucking want to make any money, I'll go and make it myself. <laughs> so <laughs> I said, okay, man, have fun. Yeah. This is it for me. And that's the last time I ever got on stage. Wow, okay. So what are you doing now, right, out in uh, Canada? Well, I was, uh, I say it was because only last, only a month ago, I was, uh, Fitness manager goes gym in Brassard. Okay. Brassard, yeah. But we uh this that branch closed uh what a month ago, month and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Sub so us and in turn dispute with the renters and the building and the city and all this other stuff. Okay. So then I am now I'm now all I have quite a large clientele there and I've moved to another gym. Okay. And Clientele had moved with me. They were not there for the gym. They made that quite clear. Okay. It was just to change the house. Yeah. The habits are still the same, and that's why I couldn't have this interview with you. That's why it took so long. But yeah. now I can speak. I can speak well because this was always on my mind. Yeah, yeah. I have to find time for it, and I really, I really, I I didn't know this is the sort of stuff you were doing, but I'm really pleased, mm-hmm. and I'm really hurt, I'm really flattered to death. Oh, to know that you would want to talk to me, and uh, I told that to my wife. Yeah. And uh, I have to find the time. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be rushed. Yeah. So this morning I saw three clients, and right after I saw them, two, one canceled. I came back home and said, "I'm not seeing anybody else today. I'm gonna call John. I have to do it." All right. We Great. Have Great. And this here I am. Great. I'm I'm glad you sh- uh, had the time to do it because uh, I think you're definitely a true legend in the sport. And uh, like I said, I grew up uh, going to the contest in Columbus, and I got to see you fortunately about four different times. So uh, <laughs> I, I think you're a big influence for a lot of bodybuilders, Roy. Over the you know, like Lee Haney himself. You know, he said he was very influenced by uh, your development. So he said that to me. But this is uh, I can. And my wife don't want to hear me say this, but I I'll be around for a while. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll be happy I'll be happy with with, with with people like yourself around, knowing that I can live among you guys, you know, for quite a few more years. Yeah, I hope you are too. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, Roy. Well, thank you for joining us on the Bodybuilding Legend Show. I really appreciate uh, your time, and uh, it was an honor to talk to you. And uh, I'm glad you spent the time with us to. Uh, Tell us all those great stories. That was great. <laughs> John, the, uh, the honor is mine, man. The, the, I, the appreciation is all mine. It's all mine. Thank you very much. It's, uh, I, uh, I hope I get to see it. And, uh, I hope other people get to see it. And, uh, yeah. And you, you're so relevant. Everything you, you probably got prepared, everything you said, you brought back things to me that I forgot. <laughs> but I'm sure I brought something to you that you didn't know about, and that was the Mr. Europe. I yeah. keep telling my that if I when I write a book, I'm gonna put that in. And I have the pictures here from the, you know, German magazine. I still have it. You know, oh, black really? and white picture. Right, calendar smooth as hell, uh-huh. but still in calling the big trophy. <laughs> 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 and Frank was next to me. Oh boy, it's funny. Anyway, it's really a really really great pleasure talking to you. I shall sleep well now. Okay. It shall not on my mind. I was really worried that. Don't get too bogged down. Well, you gotta call John. He's nice. He's persistent. He's he didn't he didn't say go to hell. He just <laughs> he just. I'm I'm happy for your patience. I'm really I'm really happy for it. Thank you. All right. Thank Good you, day. Roy. Thanks, thanks for much. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Have a nice day. Have a nice life, man. All right. Thanks, Roy. Thanks you, you too, buddy. Take, Take care. Bye. All right. Thanks for watching another edition of the Bodybuilding Legend Show. Thanks to Roy Calendar for taking the time out of his schedule to talk to us. Next time on the Bodybuilding Legends show, we're going to be talking to six-time Mr. Olympia himself, Dorian Yates.
Dorian's going to talk about his beginnings in the sport and his six Mr. Olympia wins from 1992 to 1997. That'll be next time on the Bodybuilding Legends Show. We'll see you then.